You know, ever since Game of Thrones ended a few months ago, there's been this void of pop culture fantasy that we've all latched on to. You know, Game of Thrones brought a lot of people in that didn't think they originally liked fantasy and magic and dragons and all that. And regardless of what you think about the ending of Game of Thrones, uh, either way, it left a big hole in our hearts, I think. So I was looking today for some Witcher news, actually, to see if they've updated anything as far as release dates or whatever. And I figured I would talk about, you know, could The Witcher be the next Game of Thrones as far as some of the similarities and differences? I mean, fantasy has, you know, ma you know major threads that are kind of similar and all that. So I figured I would kind of go over some of that as far as uh, what I know so far about The Witcher and the show coming out. But really, and honestly, an honest question, I don't, I don't think anything will ever match the scale of it. But could Witcher be the next Game of Thrones? But before we jump into the video, let me thank my newest Patreons. Thank you to Amanda Duncan. Thank you to Amira for the upgrade. Thank you to Angie for the upgrade as well. Thank you to Daniel Carter. Thank you to Mr. Scotty. Thank you to Patty for the upgrade. Thank you to Sneaky McCheese for the upgrade. Thank you to Tina. And thank you to TJ as well. I really appreciate the support, you guys. You may have heard this many times from some of your favorite YouTubers. Right now, it is completely broken for many of us. It's not putting out videos anymore. They don't get the views anymore. They're not being suggested anymore. And I understand to a degree Game of Thrones killed a lot of these channels, so I get that completely. But really thank you for the support because without Patreon, a lot of your favorite channels could not keep going, and that's just the bottom line. Also, a quick reminder, through the end of this month, I have a special going. If you join Patreon at the $10 level, you will receive a signed copy of my upcoming novel, my first novel I'm working on. As many of you know, on Patreon, I am releasing chapters there for feedback and beta readers, etc., as well as writing a short story that will be done actually probably within the next week or two, but I wanted to offer that to you guys as a special offer for Patreon supporters who allow me to make videos and stream on Twitch and take the time to write because you can't get paid for writing while you actually write as a new writer especially. So anyway, just wanted to remind people of that. That is good through the end of September. So uh, all those links will be in the description below. But anyway, let's jump right in and talk about the video here. Again, I started to look at some of the Witcher news, see if we got a release date or whatever, because I'm really starting to look forward to this. Again, this Game of Thrones has left this big void, this hole in our hearts, you know, in pop culture for fantasy. And I think a lot of people are trying to replicate the success of Game of Thrones. You know, we have obviously The Witcher, like we're talking about. We have the upcoming Lord of the Rings uh, television show on Amazon, which will probably be in another year or two at least. But people are going to try to replicate this Game of Thrones thing, and as we've seen before, uh, with other shows that are fairly similar, like Vikings, for example, The Last Kingdom. So they're trying to take, you know, these real world history things and kind of make it to a dramatic show like Game of Thrones. So does The Witcher have a real shot of doing that? So let's talk about some of the differences and some of the threads that are also similar uh, within fantasy in general as well. Obviously, the first thing is that The Witcher is based off a set of books that are complete. Polish author Andrzej Sapkowski has completed these books a long time ago so this there's not going to be any surprises as far as uh, you know the showrunners of this show surpassing the you know canon material that it's based off of again these are based off the books and not the video games that's another thing though the witcher got so popular as far as the book series that it became a huge video game series by cd project red and some of the best games arguably in uh in history especially the witcher 3 the wild hunt is one of the best games of all time uh, to a lot of people, and that's uh, certainly arguable, but I'm actually streaming that on Twitch right now uh, once a week or whatever, um, and it's a really, really good game. So it's got popular enough to spawn a huge video game series, um, whereas Game of Thrones, it spawned some video games, but none of them are really that groundbreaking, nothing really good, Most mostly pay-to-play video games. So anyway, they do have some similar threads, uh, so let's get into some of those. First of all, let's talk about a little bit of history. So with The Witcher, you have an original race of elves and then, of course, dwarves and things like that. And then, of course, humans come along and conquer everyone, which is pretty standard fantasy trope. That's pretty standard in fantasy as far as, you know, the big bad humans coming in to some continent or world somewhere and wiping out these, uh, these other races. But anyway, the, you had the elves essentially teach 
magic to humans and then humans wiped out all the elves and not to get too in depth as far as you know spoiling anything as far as book stuff but that's just the general idea behind the uh, the history of the witcher uh in a very similar thread in game of thrones or song of ice and fire you had the first race being the children of the forest and the giants and they were fighting with each other just like the elves and dwarves and then humans came along of course and ended up conquering everyone now they did come to a pact or whatever as far as the children and the, the first men, you know, living in harmony. But of course, they had basically done all the damage already. So the same kind of theme as far as humans coming in and screwing up everything, of course, and uh, leaving, you know, the, the indigenous people of Westeros uh, to their own demise, essentially. So you have some similar threads with that. So those are very similar in some of the backstories. And again, that's a very general high level view of what's going on because I don't want to get too deep in anything for you guys that are currently reading the Witcher books. I know a lot of people are, including myself. Uh, as far as uh, some other similar things and, and, and differences as well, you have the political intrigue uh, and war, of course, going on in these two worlds. Of course, in the Witcher, you have two major factions at war of the Nilfgaard Empire, which is a southern empire, and they're basically against everyone else in the north, all the northern kingdoms. So you have this Battle for power and land, just like in any standard fantasy trope, uh, based off real history, obviously. And then in Game of Thrones, you essentially have a unified kingdom at first, uh, with just you know some minor wars between houses, etc., little skirmishes, etc. But then, of course, you have the War of the Five Kings, all for the Iron Throne, uh, to take the Iron Throne and the power that goes with it, or whatever. But ultimately, it ends up being humanity all of humanity, no matter what house you're from, Lannister, Stark, Targaryen, whatever, against the bigger threat being the White Walkers or the Others. Now, what's really cool about it is in the Game of Thrones or Ice and Fire, most of the magic is really built up as the story goes along, and it's really presented as history or myth, or maybe that happened, you know, thousands of years ago, but there's nothing like that around today. And, of course, our characters discover that in fact dire wolves are real, white walkers are real, grumpkins and snarks and all the things they told you about, you know, your wet nurses in your bed, turn out to be actually a real thing. So it ends up being, the idea at least, was uh, it ends up being the humans kind of uniting and putting aside their differences or whatever and then coming together to fight this ultimate evil, the Night King and the White Walkers, or however it goes down in the books, it will be very similar, I'm sure. But in general, the Witcher has magic already here. So what I worry about is it being too much about magic and monsters and things like that and not enough about the characters. So I don't think they'll go that route, but it's just a worry of mine. It's just a concern because you can kind of compare the Night's Watch from Game of Thrones in a way to the Witchers from this world, the Witcher. Uh, they are, you know, monster hunters. They are trained people who go through all these modifications and basically they become mutants essentially to fight monsters and use magic, etc., and essentially saving the world from monsters or whatever. But at the same time, they're also despised by people because they become, you know, these monsters themselves essentially, and supposedly they have no feelings, emotions, etc. So there are some similar threads there as far as what you could compare the Witchers to in Game of Thrones or A Song of Ice and Fire. Kind of like the Night's Watch, they're up there to guard the realms of men, although until the story starts to really progress, they don't really have anything to do. It's really a place for people to be sent whenever they commit crimes that are not punishable by death. And then we can kind of get into the characters. Uh, this hopefully will be a very character-driven show. This is, again, is kind of what I worry about. I think they'll do a pretty good job here from what I've read so far. But, you know, with the sheer size of Game of Thrones, you had so many more characters to focus on. You guys remember the first time you watched Game of Thrones or read the books. It was hard to keep up with who was who and what house did what or whatever and who was really in power. Uh, so The Witcher will be focused on a lot less fewer characters, I think. I mean, you're going to have mainly Geralt, uh, Yennefer, as well as Ciri, the three main characters that the show focuses on. So hopefully they really, you know, hammer down and make these characters really relatable and all that stuff as far as being a character driven show and there's a handful of other characters too but again I, I go and going back to the magic thing since magic is an accepted thing in this world we everybody kind of knows it's real some people accept it like witches and warlocks and witchers etc some people think it's all evil you know it is a known thing so grumpkins and snarks do exist in this witcher world as in Game of Thrones, you know, it's more like, oh, and that's all bullshit. That may have happened maybe thousands of years ago, 
but probably not. And it's just, there's no such thing as, you know, children of the forest or white walkers. They've been gone for thousands of years. But so I worry that they get too tied up in the magical things. I don't want them to go too far to the Harry Potter side of high fantasy where it's, you know, waving a magic wand. Now, that doesn't happen in the books or anything like that. So I don't think they'll go that route. It's just one small concern as far as getting too caught up in the magic and turning people off to the characters and how great the characters are. Now, again, it's based off the books and not the video games. And there's, uh, they are great characters in the books. So I have no doubt that they will probably do the right thing and go more along the lines of a character-driven story. Uh, you're just going to have a lot less Phew. characters as far as main characters to kind of you know fully understand. So in that sense, I think that's a good thing. Um, you, you know, you can get too many characters as far as Game of Thrones and Song of, especially as Song of Ice and Fire, the book. So they omitted so many characters in that show uh, that uh, it's probably better to focus only on a handful as opposed to you know 15 or 20. Then again, you know, in Game of Thrones, you have these A characters. They get killed off in the earlier books, and then the B characters kind of rise up and take their place. It's just a small concern about getting too magic-y. So in conclusion, will The Witcher be the next Game of Thrones? Well, I don't think it's a simple yes or no, so I'll say yes and no. Uh, definitely yes in the idea of a great fantasy world that fans seem to crave after Game of Thrones has ended, especially the way it ended. I know a lot of people have issues with that. A few of you don't, and that's fine too. We're not here to get into the end of Game of Thrones. But a lot of people got pulled into Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire of the Books, or both, by family, friends, and all the hype, who never thought they would enjoy fantasy in the first place. They never thought they would care for, you know, dragons and magic and all that good stuff. You know, kind of the, the, the typical things you think of when you think fantasy. But once they came to see what it was, it was a character-driven show, and the magic was minimal, people really fell in love with it, obviously, and that's why it became the biggest show in history, period. So I do think that's why all these networks are trying to kind of replicate the success of Game of Thrones, because a lot of us crave this new fantasy world to get into. But at the same time, a lot of people were right, you know, kind of heartbroken over Game of Thrones and don't really want to invest their time into another epic saga show only to be let down. But again, that goes back to this is a story that's already complete. The books are finished. There's no issue with passing the can of material, as I mentioned before. So if you like the ending of the books and if you like the books, you're probably going to love the show. But I think a lot of people are craving this new thing, but other people were kind of afraid to get invested in a new thing again, only to have their heart broken. So in that sense, I think it can be the next big fantasy thing. Will it ever surpass Game of Thrones in the sense of sheer scale? I highly doubt it. Now, of course, going along with that same idea about how Game of Thrones put a lot of people in to fantasy who never believed they would like or enjoy fantasy before that, you do have this huge group of uh, people out there, this huge audience now, who are now receptive to fantasy. So I think in that sense, that will certainly help shows like The Witcher and Lord of the Rings, etc., and anything else that may come out because you already have this group of people who were pulled in, and then some converted to book readers as well, who are waiting for this next big thing, as some of us wait for the last books to be published, if they ever are. So I think although The Witcher has been attempted before over overseas, uh, as far as a show and a movie as well, which, which the author completely just kind of rejected, and they didn't really go over well, I think this will be well done. It's going to have a high budget, obviously, and it'll probably get even better after the first season or two or whatever, just like Game of Thrones did. You have this whole world of people uh, who are now receptive to fantasy, so I think it, uh, overall it goes over well. And a lot of gamers out there who want to see this on the big screen done right, so I think you have that audience as well. So it will have a big, big audience, I believe, and I think it will do very, very well. But in the sense of sheer scale, I don't think anything will ever ever cover Game of Thrones. I just don't think the sheer massive scale of it and how big it got, I just don't know if a show um, can replicate that again. We'll see, we'll see. I don't know if it will captivate as many people that Game of Thrones did. Then again, given the ending of Game of Thrones and how many of us thought it was lackluster or downright horrible, a lot of us do crave a world, a fantasy world, where they actually get it right this time. So anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. I just want to kind of throw the Witcher, you know, trailer up in the background as I, you know, did some commentary over it. Let me know what you think. You know, will it be the next Game of Thrones as far as, you know, stealing our hearts and we all fall in love with this show and the characters? 
or will it just be another pretty good show that, you know, does a good job, you know, it looks great, you know, visually, has some good characters, but you really don't have the same passion for it like you did Game of Thrones before, you know, the last couple of seasons or whatever. Also, a quick reminder, if you do want to read The Witcher books, you can go to audibletrial.com slash smokescreen. That link will be in the description below and get a free 30-day trial of audible.com and get a free book as well. Start with The Last Wish, start with the short stories and kind of get an idea of what you're going to expect in The Witcher show. So be sure to check that out. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash smokescreen and you can get a free audiobook of your choice. And if you decide to cancel and not actually go ahead with the full subscription to Audible, you will be able to keep that book as well. But it's a good way to kind of uh, jump ahead and kind of get a, a good idea of what, what to expect when The Witcher does come out later this year. Anyway, guys, as usual, thank you for all the support, especially you guys on Patreon. And a huge shout out to my executive Patreon smokescreen producers, to new channel members as well. Thank you guys so much. You guys literally keep this channel going. And as usual, if you dig what I do here, please give me a like, comment, and a share. Again, YouTube is broken. It really, really helps out the channel if you subscribe, if you like, and you share the videos. It really helps out the channel. We're trying to reverse this trend. We are going backwards, and uh, I'm doing everything in my power to try to reverse it to get this thing going forward again. So I uh, really appreciate all the uh, likes, comments, support, shares, etc., and definitely subscriptions. So anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.